In today's video, I am going to be making methyl orange from sulfonylic acid. The main use of methyl orange is as a pH indicator for doing titrations in a lab. To make the methyl orange, I used 3.6 grams of sulfonylic acid, 2.8 milliliters of NN dimethyl aniline, 1.2 grams of sodium carbonate, 1.5 grams of sodium nitrite, 10 grams of sodium chloride, 3 grams of sodium hydroxide, 5 milliliters of glacial acetic acid, and 5 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. To get started, I weigh out 3.6 grams of sulfonylic acid into a 100 milliliter beaker. I place the beaker on my hot plate and add it in a magnetic stir bar. I turned on the magnetic stirring and poured in 100 milliliters of water. I then slowly started adding 1.2 grams of sodium carbonate. The reaction happening here is that the sodium carbonate deprotonates the sulfonylic acid which produces sodium sulfonylate and carbon dioxide. After adding all of the sodium carbonate, the obtained solution should be clear. 1.5 grams of sodium nitrite is added to the sodium sulfonylate solution. I put the 100 milliliter beaker to the side and placed a 500 milliliter beaker on the hot plate. To the 500 milliliter beaker, I added two ice cubes and poured in 25 milliliters of water. To the ice water mixture, I added 5 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. I cooled the 500 milliliter beaker on an ice bath and then poured in the contents of the 100 milliliter beaker. The reaction happening here is that firstly, the sodium nitrite reacts with the hydrochloric acid in a series of steps to produce the nitrosyl ion. The nitrosyl ion then reacts with the sodium sulfonylate to produce the diazonium salt. I then added 2.8 milliliters of NN dimethyl aniline to the reaction mixture. A color change is immediately observed. I washed the measuring cylinder with 5 milliliters of glacial acetic acid. The reaction happening here is that the diazonium salt reacts with the NN dimethyl aniline to form our final product, which is methyl orange. I took the beaker out of the ice bath and let it warm back up to room temperature. In this step, I have to make the pH of the solution basic. The pH of the solution right now is acidic. I started slowly adding 30 milliliters of a 10% sodium hydroxide solution. I made the solution by dissolving 3 grams of sodium hydroxide in 30 milliliters of water. It is very important to add the sodium hydroxide at a few milliliters at a time, or else the sodium hydroxide will react with the dimethyl aniline and give a very low yield of methyl orange. Once the pH of the solution is basic, I boiled the solution for 15 minutes so that most of the solids dissolve. After 15 minutes, 10 grams of sodium chloride is added which will precipitate the methyl orange. I took the beaker out of the hot plate and let it cool in the freezer overnight. After cooling, a vacuum filtration is done to separate the methyl orange. I washed the beaker with cold brine to get out as much of the methyl orange. The crude methyl orange is transferred to a beaker and is recrystallized with hot water. Once the methyl orange dissolved to form a solution, I poured the solution into a smaller beaker and left it in the freezer to cool down. Another vacuum filtration is done to separate the pure methyl orange.
I transferred all of the wet methyl orange to a beaker and dried it in the oven for a few hours. Once the methyl orange is dry, I measured the yield I got. I got 4.7 grams of product, which is a 73.3% yield based on the starting amount of sulfonylic acid. To test the methyl orange as a pH indicator, I made solutions of it in three different beakers. To the right beaker, I added a sodium hydroxide solution, which caused the color to turn yellow. To the left beaker, I added hydrochloric acid, which caused the color of the solution to turn red. That will be it for today's video. Thanks for watching.